Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. This is Gamify Your Glide app. In this episode, we're gonna talk about all things challenges. We're gonna create the challenges, we're gonna complete the challenges, we're gonna get rewards for the challenges, and everything in between. If you've already watched a previous episode of my non-challenges, it's gonna be slightly different. We're gonna restructure our sheet and restructure our app in order to make things a little bit more efficient. Now, if you haven't watched the first two episodes of this series, go back and watch those first, because otherwise what we're doing today is not gonna make much sense to you. Otherwise, buckle up, here we go, episode three. So previously on Gamify Your Glide app, we created this awesome My Profile screen, which has our avatar, our username, this cool progress bar going around, our rank overlay, We've got our class on there, and our XP and goal balances. The only thing it doesn't have is to see how much XP we need to move on to the next rank. And we didn't really complete a screen that has a list of all of our ranks. So we can complete that today too. Afterwards, we're gonna dive into challenges. So the first thing we need to do, pretty simple, is just to create a display here of our XP needed to get to the next rank and maybe even list the name of the rank that we're currently at here. To do that, we're gonna come over to our data sheet in our users tab. Now we already have this template column called rank progress display, which has our current XP and the XP needed. I'm gonna simply edit this to include the name of our rank in addition to this. So R, where R stands for current rank. And we'll put R right in front like this. So now we see that we are currently bronze. We have 180 out of 249 XP needed for that rank. And then in our basic table at the top here, we're simply gonna replace our XP column with our rank progress display column like that. So now we can see the name of the rank that we're at along with our current progress. Now, if you wanna create a rank screen to show all of the ranks and maybe even show which ones you've already earned, we simply just need to create a new tab here. We can call it ranks. And the source will be the rank sheet. For our icon, we can find something fun. Uh, let's look for reward. Usually I get good hits when I come up with the word reward. Looking for like a rank like this. Okay, and we can see that it defaults us to all of our ranks. If you wanna see most of them all at once, we can make it a compact inline list. And we have the image, we have the name, and this color we don't need. Maybe we wanna see like the minimum needed. So for the details, we can choose the points minimum needed in order to earn that rank. And then diving in, right, we have just this default screen, but we can make this look a little prettier. Uh, instead of a title component, which seems to cut off our rank here, we'll simply add an image of our current rank. Uh, we can add name using a text component. Let's center it and make it large, maybe a header one. And we're gonna choose the name of our rank here something like this. And then maybe we wanna see like the minimum to maximum. So to do that, uh, we create a template column in our rank sheet. Let's call it min to max display, make it consistent for us. Template column, and we'll do min dash max. We'll add two replacements where min stands for the points minimum and max stands for the points maximum done. Uh, not sure why it's not displaying here in my data editor, but it should display correctly here in the builder. So let's go ahead and clone my text column. I'll choose my points min and max display, but make it a smaller headline, something like this. All right, and so now we can see all of the ranks. Now, if you want to see how many ranks we've already earned, as well as how many ranks we have yet to earn, here's a cool little trick. Um, if you haven't yet heard of this service called Cloudinary, basically think of it like an Adobe Photoshop uh, on the fly. So you can make image adjustments like making things uh, opaque or adding a border or adding an overlay or changing the size of these images all on the fly uh, just by changing some of the words in the link to the image. So if we wanted to add a grayscale opaque version of this image to show the images that we haven't yet earned, we can simply come over here and create a template column and we'll call this unearned images. 
The template for this is going to be the Cloudinary website, followed by a modifier, in this case, grayscale and opaque, followed by the image we're going to reference, our image column here. So just follow along with me. We're going to do HTTPS forward slash forward slash res dot cloudinary dot com forward slash glide forward slash image because we're referencing an image forward slash fetch because we're going to fetch a URL from some other location in this case our image column forward slash and then our modifiers here's where we can start playing around with modifying and transforming our image what we want is grayscale and opaque so I already know what these are grayscale is e underscore gray with a y scale and then if we want to do it opaque we simply add a comma and then we can do o for opaque underscore and the percentage we want up for the opaqueness in this case or opacity uh, in this case 50 percent forward slash and then our finally our image that we're fetching i'll do a symbol for now and i'm going to replace that symbol with our image column done all right so now i have this unearned images and you can see here that if i take this first url copy it go to a new tab and paste we see that we have our glide forward slash image forward slash fetch grayscale 050 followed by then the image from our image column and when i hit return you see that i have this opaque grayscale version of our image that's pretty cool. All right, so now all we have to do is display one or the other based upon if we've earned the rank. And we know if we've earned the rank because of this if rank column we've already created. So lastly, we're gonna call this if image and we'll create an if then else. And we're gonna say if the if rank is not empty, meaning it's got something filled in, then we'll show the full color image. Otherwise, else we'll show the unearned images, done. All right, so now we have these two you see are the true URL, and these ones are our Cloudinary URL. And now back in our rank sheet, we are going to replace our image with the if image. And watch this, how cool is that? So now as we earn the ranks, they will be filled in with color and become full body color, right? Pretty cool. Um, you can do the same thing here. If you want to show this image as being, um, uh, if you want this, yeah, this image to be full as well, we can change this image to the if image. And it looks a little grainy. So here, let's make it uh, slightly smaller. Just get better resolution on that as well. Very good. All right. But our rank here will always be our true image. All right, so now we've created a ranks sheet. We just have to simply display it in our menu. Let's put it underneath the classes, just like this. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and create our challenges sheet. So for this, what we're gonna do is create a sheet for all of our challenges. Then we're gonna create a sheet that's gonna temporarily house those challenges that have been submitted, but not yet approved. So to get started, we're gonna click on our sheet here. We're gonna create a new tab at the bottom called Challenges. And let's create with the end in mind, right? For here, for our challenges, we wanna have all the columns we need in order to display the challenge correctly. That's gonna include the title, a description, the instructions, images, maybe some links to videos. Um, if we're awarding points, we'll want columns for those points as well. So let's go ahead and create those. Let's call this challenge title, maybe a challenge description. We want uh, our award, maybe like an XP award and a gold award. We want instructions. And Glide can handle markdown language or HTML. So for instructions, I'm just going to make a note here that we can do markdown or HTML. And then lastly, we want this column called awarded to. And in this column, we are gonna house all of the email addresses, comma separated, for all of the users that have earned this challenge or have completed this challenge. This is gonna be our magic column here, this awarded to. Now, if we also want some additional information like Maybe we're showing a YouTube video. We could have a video URL. If we're sending them to a different website, 
in order to view something and then come back, we could just call this, you know, link to resource. Whatever information you want here as part of your challenge. Okay, just make sure you have a column for that. The last part of this is to create a challenge log where all of our users are gonna submit their challenges. Okay, we can do this in two places. We could do this either in Google Sheets, if we need to see all of the log entries here in the sheet. But I'm gonna recommend that we actually use a glide table for this. And the namely being because we are not going to keep those items in the log. It's a temporary log. So as the user submits things, they'll have lines in there. But as we approve them, we're gonna get rid of the log in order to save rows. So I recommend coming over to our glide table, going to our data editor, and under tables, we're gonna add a new glide table. The difference is that in this glide table, it will never touch our Google Sheet. Okay, it's much more efficient and the performance is much better. Just the limitations is that you can't yet do bulk import or bulk copy and paste amongst or across you know, columns. Now I mentioned that this challenge log is a temporary log. So let's name it that. We'll call this temp challenge log. And we need a few items here. We need the email address of the person who is submitting the entry. We need the name of the challenge. Done. We need to include the date of the time that they completed the challenge. For a description, instead of description, let's change this to response. Maybe we want them to write a response to the challenge. Uh, maybe we want them to attach something. Let's, let's include attachment column. So we'll do a basic column link for the attachment. All right, so that's all we need to get started with this. So we have our challenges and our temp challenge log. All right, let's create our first challenge. Let's make this just a dummy challenge. We'll call this uh, hello world. For challenge description, we can be like my first challenge. Let's give them 10 XP and 10 gold. The instructions markdown language. All right, so here's this kind of fun. Let's do it over here. So take a selfie. Uh, two. Attach below. Three. Um, describe your experience with this app so far. Okay, so this awarded two, let's drag over here. Uh, we're not gonna have a video or a link for this particular challenge. Oh, maybe we also want a featured image. So let's insert one right. Let's do a featured image. Let's drag that over a bit. Okay, let's give our app a refresh. And we should see that this has now refreshed good. So featured images, drag this over a bit. Let's make it an image column so that way we can upload something from our builder. All right, so hello world. Let's just say hello. Let's see if we can find anything fun for hello. Cool, how about that? All right, so now back in our app, we need to create a challenges tab. So I'm gonna add a new tab here. Again, we're gonna call this challenges. The source will be the challenges sheet. And then for our tab icon, maybe something like a flag or a mountain, or mountain climber. Let's just do a flag for now, that's fine. Something like this. And here we have a list of all of our challenges. I don't know why I have this blank one. So we can filter this list on this inline list. We'll filter where the challenge title is not empty. All right. Uh, then we want to display, you know, what do we want to display on here? So maybe we want to display the name, how much it's worth, right? Uh, I guess back on our XP award and our gold award, we should probably use the same units here. So back in our data sheet under challenges, let's give our XP a units of 10 XP and our gold, let's use the same gold icon we were using before. I guess this is all for display purposes. It's not gonna affect the functionality in any way. Excellent. So we have hello world, my first challenge. Let's make this a 
card view like that. And now we just need to customize our cards. Maybe we want to include, as part of the avatar text, how much XP it's worth. And for our caption, how much gold it's worth, like that. Uh, we can include a header or not. I don't think that's necessary. We can just leave that blank. So something like this would look fine. All right, diving into the challenge, we need to craft our challenge sheet here. See our instructions markdown um, created this kind of nicely. So, but I don't want them as action texts. I want to create a title. So we have a title already here. Hello world, my first challenge. Let's make it the image, our featured image. That looks all right. Uh, maybe for our reward, we'll use a basic table and we can call it reward. We can even include a fun emoji, like a diamond or something. Or a treasure box. I don't know if there's a treasure box one, but like reward. And then here we have our XP award and our gold award, like this. It's kind of close. We can add a separator in between. Love the separator. Use separators liberally. Like that. Okay, now if we had video URL, I might want to place that right underneath this. So I'd have like a, or maybe I'd have the instructions first. So let's do a rich text with our instructions. Okay. Then maybe I'd have our video, if we had it one here, so a video URL. If we had a link resource, I'd probably use a link component here for our link to resource. And lastly, we're gonna have a button for them to submit their response. So let's go ahead and say, complete this challenge. For our action, typically we would do a show form, but I've been in the habit recently of just doing a create new action because there's been times where I've wanted to do one thing and then realized later that I wanted to do something else along with it. And I've had to scrap that action, rebuild it here anyway. So it might just make it more sense to come over here and just do the show form here. And then if we want to do anything else in addition to that, we have the ability to do that. So just do a show form and we'll call this complete action or complete challenge. I usually name my form screens and my link to screens the same thing as the button. And for our action name, we'll call this complete challenge. Save. All right, so now when I click on this complete this challenge button, it brings us to a form and we're gonna write this to the temp challenge log. Now it starts us off with a few entries here, but we don't need all of these, right? The email, the challenge and the date are all behind the scenes, right? So I can trash email and instead add a special value user emails, which will automatically write the email to the log for our challenge. That's part of our screen columns. And this will be our challenge title. For our date, again, that's a special column with the current date and time. Okay, the response, maybe we wanna make it required so they have to submit a response, right? And then our attachment. So our attachment uh, would probably be a file upload. So we're gonna get rid of the text entry and instead do a file picker for our attachment. And I'm not going to make it required because it may or may not be part of the instructions. All right. So here, the response, um, awesome app. And for attachment, I'll just pick anything here because it doesn't really matter. And then I hit submit. And then that should be written to my challenge log. Boom. All right. So now I have this temp challenge log with this entry. Now, when that happens, I don't want them to be able to complete it a second time, right? Instead, we should show something like it's pending, right? Because it hasn't yet been approved by our admins. So here's a little trick I learned. Um, in the log, what we wanna do is determine if they have completed the challenge yet or not. I used to do this thing where I would combine the email and the challenge together as a template column and then go to the challenges and do the same thing and do a relation to see if all that works. But I've actually found a shortcut. Here's the shortcut. Uh, you create an if then else column here in the destination sheet. So I'm gonna say, you know, is this my submission? 
and we're gonna create an if then else. And we're gonna say, hey, if the email is not the signed in user, meaning that this is not my submission, then leave it blank. Otherwise, we are gonna pick the name of the challenge like so. So if somebody else had completed the hello world challenge, it wouldn't be my email address and this would be blank. But instead we are going to choose, um, this one is, and so we have the challenge name here in the if then else. Now in my challenges, I can relate the challenge title here to the if then else to see if there's a match. And it's only gonna match ones that are belong to me because I'm the signed in user. So we're gonna say here in the challenges sheet, we'll call this to rel, let's say my submissions. And it's gonna be a relation from the challenge title to the temp challenge log, my submission. And we're not gonna match multiple because we should only have to complete it once. If you're allowing them to submit it more than once, maybe you do wanna match multiple at some point, but since this is a temporary challenge log, I'm imagining you're only gonna match it once, so I don't need the match multiple, done. All right, so now we have this column here that's either full of a relation, that made it found a match, or it's empty. So now back in my app, I can hide this button and show this button only if there's a match. So I'm actually gonna duplicate this button over here. And instead of complete this challenge, we are going to say pending. We're gonna be challenge or approval pending. Pending approval, something like that. And let's make it a grayed out button. And instead of doing this action here, we're gonna create a new action and it's gonna be a link to screen. Again, I could do this using just a, a straightforward action, but um, in case I wanted to add something else, I can. And we are going to relate this to the my submission. And for the title, we can call it the challenge title here. And for the action name, we're gonna say this is view submission. So we'll save that. All right, so now we have these two buttons, but we don't wanna show these buttons all the time. So for this complete this challenge button, we only wanna display that when the relation to my submissions is empty, meaning they haven't submitted anything yet. And we want the opposite for the approval pending. So I'll click on approval pending and change the visibility to where the rel my submissions is not empty. So if they've submitted something, there'll be a match and then this button will appear. Uh, then you can click on this button and you can configure this screen. Um, I chose a title with the name of the challenge along with the date they submitted it, their response, and their attachment. Just for confirmation that these things existed. All right, so the last thing we have to do is have an admin be able to approve this challenge, which means we need an admin screen. So back in our tabs over here, we're gonna add in a new tab. Let's call this admin. And for our source, this should be our user screen. For our tab icon, we could choose either a shield or a lock or a shield with a lock. Look at this, yes, perfect. Uh, let's make this a detail screen. And for the options, we want this to be where filtered email is the signed in user. So that way, if I have more than one admin, we each get our own screens. But we only want this to be seen if our role is an admin. Back in our data editor, I created a new column here called is admin. I made it a Boolean column. So I said add a new column, basic column Boolean. Okay. Call it is admin. And then I can just check the box for anybody who's an admin. All right, so on our admin screen, we can now set the visibility to where is admin is true. And I always use lowercase letters for true and false. It seems to work the most reliably. All right, so now I have this admin screen that's private to just admins and it's filtered to just me. And now I want a list of all of the pending challenge submissions. A couple ways we could do that. We could do a list relation or we could have an inline list that's maybe just limited to a certain amount of current submissions at one in one view. I'm gonna opt for that. So I'm gonna do an inline list and we're gonna call this pending challenges. 
And our values are going to be the temp challenge log. Okay, for our title, we have our challenge. Uh, but we probably want to see who is submitting this challenge, don't we? So back in our data editor, in our temp challenge log, we're going to do a relation from our email address to the user's email. So we're going to do a rel user. We're going to do a relation from email to user's email. We're not going to match multiple because there's only one of us, right? Done. And then from here, I can actually grab some lookups. I could do the username to grab the username of the user. I could also grab the user image to get a lookup of the user's image. OK, spoiler alert. We're also going to grab the user's current gold and current XP, because eventually we're going to add those things to their, uh, to their balance. But we need to know what it is first. So we're going to say user XP lookup of their current XP, and then user gold. Again, lookup user gold. Done. So now we have the name, the image, the XP, and the gold. We can go ahead and add those values to this pending challenge. So maybe the image is the user image here. Perhaps the details is the user name. So we could see what the challenge was and the name of the person, right? For this inline list, maybe we want to make it compact so we could fit more in at once, right? Uh, maybe we want to swap these two. So maybe we want the details, maybe the, this to be the um, username for the title and the details is the challenge name, like that. If you wanted to include the date and everything on this view, you could probably have to do a, a cards view then, but this is fine for me for now. Okay, and I only want to show a few items at a time, maybe just the top five or the most five recent submissions, right? So I have a list of five things. And after that, I'm going to see this see more, which will allow me to um, see the complete list. All right. And then I want to sort this where maybe the most, the first submitted is on top. So I want to sort this by sheet order is probably fine. But to really solidify it, I could do date in ascending order, like that. All right, so on this pending challenges screen, right? Uh, again, I'm going to see a very similar screen to the challenge log here. Right? I, I probably want to make this match. So again, my title could be the name along with the date they submitted it. Now we have the relation to user that we set up, so we can just do a relation component to just pull in the user's image and uh, name and looks like class here, which is fine. Okay, then we need to display their information. So we need to display the link to their attachment. So that could be a link component. All right, so that way I can, I can view it. We should probably also see the response. So probably just a action text component like that. And now maybe I want to give them comments so we can give them a comments component like this. Now for a comments component, it needs a specific topic that's unique. So in our temp challenge log, we should probably create a row ID column like this. So that way we can grab a unique value that gets generated for us automatically here. And so now our comments topic can be the row ID like this, which also means in our challenges sheet here, right, we can create a comments component where again the topic is the row ID. So that way the admin and the player or the user can comment back and forth through the, their respective screens, right? The user will have this approval pending to type in comments, and the admin will have their admin screen to type in comments. But it'll be the same comment thread because that common thread is the row ID of their submission. All right, and lastly, we need a button to approve their challenge. All right, so here I can create a button, and we can say approve.
submission or approve challenge. All right. So with this, we're going to do some glide trickery here. This is a method that a buddy of mine came up with. We call it the trebuchet method because what it initially does is we take a value that exists somewhere and we sling it to a different cell. In this case, what we want ultimately is a list of all of the people that have completed this challenge. Right? But we don't want to create this massive bloated challenge log because then it's going to eat into our row quota very easily. And the only thing we need the challenge log for is just a temporary placeholder for us to view their submission before we approve them. Once we approve them, we really don't need to see their submission again. Right? It's like handing the paper back to a kid. We're never going to see that paper again. Right? Kind of the same thing here. So we want this approve challenge button to ultimately in the challenges sheet, uh, create a comma separated list of users in this awarded to cell. Here's how we do that. First thing, in our temp challenge log, we now need to create a relation back to the challenge. So I'm going to say rel challenge. And we're going to do a relation from the challenge name to the challenges challenge title. And we're not going to match multiple. We want a single. Afterwards, we need to grab the, that cell, that awarded two cell, to see if there's anybody already in there, right? So we're going to do a lookup. We'll call this awarded two, awarded two lookup. And we're going to do the rel challenge awarded two. Okay, right now it's blank because we don't have anybody in there yet. Fine. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we want to create, again, ultimately we want a comma separated list of email addresses of all the people that have been, that have completed that challenge. So what we would do is we would combine anybody who's already completed it. For example, if I have just some nonsense in here like uh, test at email.com, let's say that person has already completed this challenge. We see in our temp challenge log that it pulls it in. Okay. But ultimately, we want this test at email.com, comma, and then the person who submitted. So we need to create a template column for that. So we're going to do a template column. And we're going to say, uh, how about this? Old, so O, comma, new, N. And we're going to replace O for old or E for existing or something like that with the lookup, the awarded to lookup. Next, we're going to do N to be our email like this. And we're going to call this um, old plus new user. All right. So now you see we have a comma separated list of this test, the existing one here. Also, we have the new, the u at email.com. And this would work really nicely. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to take this value and send it. We're going to sling it. We're going to trebuchet it to the challenges sheet and replace this current value with the temp challenge log value. Here's the one issue is let's say that nobody has yet completed that challenge. If you go back to our temporary challenge log, you see we have this floating comma in here, which we can't have because it's going to mess up our um, are the next step here. So we need to have a condition set up to see if this is empty or not, if there are any existing users. So we're going to create an if then else. We're going to say uh, if first user, then comma, <laughs> something like this. I usually do with my if then else's. If I'm resulting in something that doesn't really quite make sense, I'll use this dictation here to just remind me what the purpose of that if then else column was. So in this case, if they're the first user, then or actually if there's an existing user, not the first user. So if there are existing, existing users, then a comma, otherwise we're going to have it be blank. So if then else, if the awarded to lookup is empty, then we don't want anything. Otherwise, when there is another email address or multiple email addresses in there, then we want the comma. Done. And so now this old plus new user template 
we can modify. Let's, call, let's do a C for comma. And we're going to choose the if then else. And so instead of this comma right here, we're going to place C. So it's basically a conditional comma. Right? If we wanted to, we could do a comma here and then do comma instead like that. That works too. All right, so now you see that because there are no existing lookups here that we don't have any commas in front. And so this you at email.com will eventually replace this awarded to. If we had something in here, right, then you see that there's now a comma in there as well. That conditional comma is there. Okay, so that's, that's the trickiest part of the setup. All right, then what we want to do is sling this value to the awarded to cell when the admin pushes the button. Um, then what we want to do is delete this line to save ourselves our rows and to save some excess bloat. But first, before we do that, we want to award the user their golden XP. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use a set column. Remember from our first video, we're going to get very comfortable with the set column action. Again, it's the most powerful action that Glide has released, in my opinion. But we can't just set the user's golden XP with their current. We have to set it with a new XP and a new gold. So we need some math columns to uh, add their current XP and their current gold to the awarded XP and the awarded gold, which doesn't exist yet in this row. So the last thing we have to do is do a lookup. We'll call this a challenge XP. So we're going to, from this relate challenge, we're going to do a lookup to grab the XP award, right? Then we're going to do challenge gold. Be a lookup or a gold award. Done. Okay. And then we need to add these two values to these two values. So we're going to say new XP is a math column. UX, yeah. So UX, the Glide finds it as user XP plus CX, challenge XP. Perfect. Um, we don't have to worry about precision or units or anything like that, because again, this is all just temporary. So we'll hit done on this. And then we have new gold. Again, a math column. So we'll have user gold plus challenge gold. Oh, I didn't find that part, because G, because there's a G in challenge already. That's OK, challenge gold. Done. All right, so you see I was at 180. And I had 10 gold, but eventually I'm going to have 190 XP and 20 gold. And so we're going to do a few set columns here, aren't we? We're going to set our users' XP and gold to these new values. And we're going to set our challenge awarded to cell with this old and new user value here. All right, so let's make that functionality happen. Finally, back in our tab here, under this approved challenge button, all we need to do is create a custom action. So we'll do create a new action. The action name will be um, approve challenge. And this is going to be a multi-step action here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a set column. And not this item, but rather the user. Let's give them their reward. So their XP will now be the new XP, and their gold will be the new gold. So we're replacing their current balance with the new balances based off of their challenge. That's it for that one. We have to do another set column where we're now going to do the relation to challenge, and we're going to replace the awarded to whatever's in there with the new awarded to, which is the old plus new user. I probably could have named that a little bit better, but yeah, new awarded lookup, right? That template column is what we want. And that's it for the challenge. Okay, lastly, we want to delete the temporary row. So we're going to do a delete row action. 
and we're gonna delete this item, which is that temporary row for this submission. Okay. Uh, maybe we also wanna show a notification. So we can uh, show a notification, success icon along with uh, challenge approved. This is just for the admin. If I wanna play a sound, we could play a fun sound. The alert sounds fine. And maybe we want to do those things first. And then we also maybe want to go back a screen like that. So it's going to approve the challenge and then send us back to the admin tab. And I put those three things first. That way to the user, to the admin, everything is very responsive. Um, right? They can continue on in the app as Glide on the back end deals with these set columns and delete rows. Okay, so that's it. We already have it named Approve Challenge. Save. All right, so here we go. So when I click this button, Approve Challenge, this user, right, who currently has 180 XP and 10 gold should now have 190 XP and 20 gold. They should also no longer have the ability to view this approval pending um, when they click on this, nothing should happen because that link to their submission will no longer be there because we deleted it using that delete action. All right, so let's try it out. Approve challenge. Challenge approved, awesome. Okay, we no longer see our temporary challenge log in here. There's nothing in there because we deleted that row. In our challenges, uh, this user, oh, okay, so we'll, we'll have to come back to this. We don't want them to complete the challenge again, right? Um, and then also the My Profile, right? Now we see we have 190 XP and the 20 gold. All right, so that looks looking good. So the last thing here is we don't want them to see the Complete This Challenge button, right? Because they've already completed it. So we need to alter the visibility condition of this button. Right now we have it set when the rel my submissions is empty and it currently is because we deleted the row. So we also need to have an additional visibility condition here to hide it only when that awarded to column, right? If we go back and take a look at that in our data, you see our awarded to now has our email address in there. And this is gonna have a comma separated list of all of the email addresses, right? So when that awarded to we only want to show up when it doesn't include our email. So when it doesn't include, then our user email. There we go. So now um, that button does not appear. So it's kind of funny having nothing there. So let's add one more fake button. So I'm gonna add a button and we can call this uh, challenge complete. And we only want this button to appear when our email address exists in that awarded to cell. So we're going to have where awarded to includes our email, user email, All right, which it does. All right. And we want this button to do nothing. So couple things we could either show an action to do a reshuffle which does nothing or we can show notification and just say like you know way to go <laughs> something like that. so when they push the button they get a yay, nice little confirmation that they did something right then we can go back again um, maybe we want to hide challenges that we've already completed right we could do that too so if we wanted to in this inline list under our options we could add a filter here to where the awarded to right um, doesn't include our email right so there are no challenges in here right or if you want to leave it in here that's fine too um, if we wanted to make a little status icon we could do that so maybe we want a status for our challenges and it's all done through an if then else and we need to work backwards. So starting with if you've completed it. So if the awarded to includes the user's email, then the status should be complete. And we can add a fun little emoji, like a green checkbox or something. Okay, otherwise, 
if the rel my submissions is not empty, meaning they've submitted something, it just hasn't been approved yet, right? Then we could say pending. Otherwise, we could say new. And we could have emojis for all of these as well. So we have a new, and then for pending, maybe we have an hourglass or the dot, dot, dot. Let's do an hourglass like that. Okay, so the new and then pending. Done. So now we have this little tagging system in here, right? And we can display that on our card. So our inline list under our tags at the top, maybe we could have our status like that. Okay, if we wanted to, we could also make it, you know, our header. Completely up to you, you know, where you want everything to be located. Like so. Okay, the last fun thing we can do here is within our challenges, maybe we wanna see all of the users who have already completed this challenge. Okay, we can do that. Um, to do so, we, all we have to do is tap into this awarded to column. Now, again, this is gonna be a comma separated list of emails. So what you need to do is break that apart into individual emails and then relate it back to the users. So to do that, I'm gonna add a new column here. We're gonna call this split awarded to, and we're gonna use the split text column. We're gonna split the awarded to by the comma, done. And so basically what this does is creates an array column of all of the email addresses of the peoples that have been awarded that challenge. And the last thing is simply to create a relation. So we're gonna call this relation to uh, completed users. And will be a relation to where the split awarded to matches the user's email. And we do wanna match multiple because there's probably gonna be more than one email that has completed the challenge. Done. All right, so the last thing here is just to create an inline list. So the inline list of our completed users that already found it, great. Um, and we can call this users that have completed this challenge. Kind of long, that's okay. All right, um, and then our value is fine. Title, uh, our username, details, class if we want to, but otherwise we can just leave it blank. Profile picture, great. And I wanna make this a tiles view four across, we can fit more of them at once, and then maybe make it like a circle. So it looks something like this, and allow text wrapping with small, so it kind of fits in there, like that. And so we'll have just a list of all the users who have ever completed this challenge. So again, to motivate those like, oh, my friends have already completed that, I should probably complete it too. All right, so that wraps up episode three of Gamify Your Glide app. In this episode, we created a nice challenge screen. We created an admin screen to approve those challenges. We used a trebuchet method to sling our users XP and gold rewards back to their user sheet. And as well as using the trebuchet method to sling the awarded two emails to the awarded two column in the challenge sheet so we can do some fun things with visibility and to see all of the users who have completed challenges without a affecting our row quota. So a lot of fun, complex things in Glide. If you have any questions on any of this, feel free to leave me a comment below or reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.